In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up a photo sweep, add a basic cube, then add some lights and materials, and export a render image. These are all the skills you need to know to be able to get something out of Maya and be able to look at it. We're going to do it with a simple object right now, but then you can do this technique with many more complex objects. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a photo backdrop. To do that, on my poly modeling shelf, I'm going to click this orange square. This makes a plane in the middle, and you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Then I'm going to click my attribute editor. You may not see this when you first open up Maya. If you don't, up in the top right hand side of your screen, you can click these three little pins, and that'll get the attribute editor. Then we have some tabs. We have P plane one, P plane shape one, and polyplane one. We want polyplane one, and then here, under polyplane history, we're going to slide these sliders down on subdivision height and width down to one. Now I can click this object. In Maya, if you want to switch from object mode, when you see the green lines, you're in object mode, you hold right mouse button, and then I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to select this edge, then hold shift and select this edge. Then I'm going to press command E or control E to extrude. I'm going to grab this blue arrow and just extrude straight up. I'll press Q on my keyboard to get back to my selection tool. Then I'll click this edge, this edge, and this edge while holding the shift key to select them all at the same time. I'll hold the shift key and right click and select bevel edge. I want to change my segments to four and everything else can stay the same. Then I'm going to press Q to get back to my selection tool and then I'll right click and I'll go to object mode. I'm going to subdivide this just to make it a little bit smoother. So I'll click this icon up here, or I can hold shift, right click, and then I can subdivide by clicking the smooth tool. So I'm going to make the divisions three that will make it nice and buttery smooth. So you can see here, this is nice and smooth. Then I'll press Q and select to be out of the tool. Now this is really small because this came in as the small polyplane. So let's go ahead and scale that up. If I press R, this is the scale tool. I don't want to grab the red or the green or the blue one. I'm going to grab this yellow one in the middle to scale up uniformly. Then I'm going to press W to move, and I'm going to grab this green one and just move it back a bit. So that way, this moves just on the ground plane. Okay, let's add a cube. So I'm going to click Cube on the poly modeling plane. And then what's really nice is I can come over here and I can look at the translate. I can translate it one up here. So now it's right on the grid. So now I have my cube there and I'm just gonna edit the cube a little bit to make it a bit more interesting to look at. I'm going to hold right mouse button, go to edge mode, select all these edges, and then I'm gonna hold shift right click bevel edge. And then I'm just gonna make two segments. And then I'm going to click my left mouse button on fraction and then I can make the fraction change. So you see here now I have just a few more edges on here and it looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to be back in object mode and now I need to add some materials because right now these are just a gray objects. So I'm going to add materials but before that let's go ahead and add some lights so we can just see what this scene might look like. So I'll go up to the Arnold menu. So here we have poly modeling, sculpting, rigging and then way over on the right we have Arnold and then over on the left, we can add an area light. So if I click this, it's gonna bring a light in. And I'll press W to move, and I can move this light up. And you see how the light has this green mark right here? So that means that's the way the light is pointing. So I'm gonna move it over this way. And we can see how the light is working. If I go to the attributes of area light shape one, we can see intensity and exposure. I generally use exposure because it's a much more powerful multiplier. So if I type six, it's going to multiply everything uh, here. So it's gonna multiply the intensity by that many times. But notice nothing happens. That's because we have to turn on the lights. And right here in this menu, I can click this button, and now I can see how this light is affecting it. So if I press E to rotate, I can rotate the light. So it's now pointing more towards the object. Then I can press W, move it in this plane, and set up my lighting scene. So I'm going to go ahead and create another light. And now if I move this one up and then I press E, 
And before rotating, if I hold J on my keyboard, it will jump to specific points. So now it's pointed right at that. But notice this light is much less powerful. So let's make it better. So I'm going to make it up to 10. This will be too bright just to show you. So you can change the intensity and the exposure and change your light. I'm going to go ahead and put this back down to six. So there we go. I'll press W. I'll move this one a little bit farther back. So I can add a third light if I want to do a key light shooting from the back here, or I can keep it just the way it is. So I think I'm going to leave it like this. So now we need to set up a camera. And to do that, I can go to create. And then we're going to create camera and then just a camera. And you'll see the camera will show up right here. So I could move my camera around like this, but it's much easier to look through the camera. So right up here on this little icon that kind of looks like a camera, if I right click, I can select camera one. Now, if I move around inside Maya, I'm basically looking through the camera. So I can go ahead and zoom in and out and I can change my scene up. If I want to see what I'm actually going to get, I can click this button right here, this little blue dot. This is going to give me the framing of my image. So I can do this and zoom out and figure out exactly how I want my camera to look. And I think I think something like that will look nice. So we'll leave it right there. And then what I can do is I can right click and I can go back to perspective. And if I just want to move back just a little bit, I can do this. And then you can always check your view again and see how that's looking. So now I think I have a nice view and this is what I'm going to get out of my rendering. So again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go back to perspective camera. And we can see all that right here. And if you don't want that to move, if I'm in the camera mode and I lock here, now I go back to perspective. This one isn't going to move, right? So it locks the view that you are looking through. So I don't want to lock the perspective view. I want to lock the camera view. So now that's locked right there. And I can see my object. So if I want to make a rendering, I can click the render button right here, this eyeball, and it's going to uh, create a render view. So then I can go render and it will render and I can render camera one. And there we go, we get that, that render and it's gonna render it with the Arnold render engine. And then I can save that. Notice it's 960 by 540. We'll talk about how to change that in a second. But let's add some materials. So we want to add materials to these objects. So I'm gonna click the background first. I'm gonna right click and hold. And at the very bottom, it says assign new material. We want to always assign Arnold shaders unless there's a reason not to. So I'll click the shader right here and then AI standard surface. So now I have AI standard surface and I can pick a color and I can change its roughness. I'm actually going to increase its roughness a lot. So it's nice and rough and not very shiny because I want it to kind of be like a paper backdrop. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click this object and I'm gonna right click assign new material. And once again, I'm going to assign an AI standard surface and this time I'm going to click on presets. So you see up at the top here, we have these presets. And then I think I'll go ahead and I'll click gold and select replace. Now, unfortunately in Maya, this is Maya 2023. There's new uh, real-time render views in Maya 2024. We see this black box. So we can't have the real-time lighting work with the Arnold shaders. So you can just turn that off with the light bulb. So how can we see in real time what's happening with the Arnold render engine? So I can click Arnold up at the top and then I can click open Arnold render view. If I do that and then I press play, now it's real time rendering. And if I move around, you'll see that the camera changes just like you would expect it. It just doesn't do that in the viewport. So I can move this around. I can move my lights up and down and see how that's going to affect my scene, okay? So that's kind of nice. And then for right now, I have my hovering cube. I'll go ahead and just move that down to right there. So that looks a lot nicer. And then what's nice is instead of looking through perspective shape, I can actually look through my camera. So this is my camera shape that I'm getting. And I'm gonna go ahead and look through the camera here. So I'm gonna go through camera one. 
And because I moved my cube, I'm just going to um, move my camera. So I have to click the lock button. And then now I can move that and set my camera view up. And there we go. Now I have a nicer composition. Lock that camera again. And now I'm going to go back to perspective view. And I'm going to move my light. So I'm going to just make this Arnold render view a little bit smaller. Put it right there. And so now I can move my lights around until I get the scene that I want. So I could move this light here, or I could actually probably need to move this light back up to the front here a little bit. And then maybe increase the intensity of that light. So I'm on this light right here, and then maybe we'll go up to seven. Now that's a little bit brighter. And then we can move this light, and then maybe press E, have it pointed more down at the object. And then maybe this one gets a little bit pointed up. And then W, and then we can move them back to be a little bit more diffuse on the lighting. Once you're happy with what you get, we can change our render settings. So I'm going to stop this because this is running constantly, and I can close this window. Up at the top of your screen, I can select this little movie icon with a gear, and these are our render settings. So if we want to change the size of our render, we scroll down to image size. So when we pick our size, we want to at least get HD 1080. So that'll be 1920 by 1080. Often you'll be rendering a 4K. So this will do those render setting sizes. And then in the Arnold renderer, you want to leave this number right here alone. But a simple and dirty way to maybe take some noise out of your render is just increase this to four or five. That will really increase your render time, but it'll make a nice render. So if I do that, then I can close this. Then I can go to Arnold and click Render. And it's going to go ahead and render that. Notice it's doing perspective shape. We want to do camera shape one. And then it's going to go ahead and render that image. As you can see, it's going to tile through and remove all of that noise. Once your render is finished, then we click File, Save Image, and we can save that image.